Hey there! Welcome back to Reddit Dating, best channel for cheating stories. Make sure to like and subscribe the channel for more spicy stories. It's been four years and I thought I was past it, but after this Memorial Day, I'm not and I need advice. I've been stalking these subreddits for a while and I thought just reading people's stories would help me. Or if I found someone with a similar situation and I could see how they did it. But I guess my situation is unique, so here we go. First, let me be clear. I don't care if you think this is fake. I don't care if you want to rip me a new one after I vent. It already happened. I thought I was okay. I thought I moved on, but after last weekend, it all came back and that anger I had back then just came in full force. And even though I'm back home with my fiancé, that anger towards my ex just won't go away. I spent years in anger management for what she did and the situation that was created and I thought I was okay. Right now, I just turned 39. I was 18 when I met my ex Marisol. During that time, I was with the Latin Kings. I was in a member since I was 13 and always in and out of trouble. Marisol was a church girl. My grandmother dragged me to Sunday Mass and when I saw her to me, it was love at first sight. I asked my cousin, who was a friend of hers, if he could introduce us, but he refused. He didn't want me to mess with her. He didn't want me to ruin her. Have you ever met someone that you wanted to make yourself better to be with? Wanted to be that man who would walk the right path? That was her. When I found out that she was going to church almost every day, I hung out by the steps, talking to her. I always walked her to and from church. She made feel like I wasn't worthless. One thing led to another, and we were dating I felt great. For a year and a half, I pushed myself away from the gang life, got my GED, became a regular churchgoer and was thinking about the future when I got unintentionally pulled back in. I was at a store and ran into someone that I used to have problems with. They were running their mouths and I tried to ignore it, I swear I did. I just let them talk and I walked away, but then I got stabbed in the shoulder blade and I lost my mind, I beat the out of him. I got arrested and suddenly it was like the I did to make my life better vanished. Marisol was at me. My grandmother kept bringing up my past mistakes and my cousin was telling me that he knew that I wasn't going to change. My public defender saw me trying to better myself and by the grace of God, got me off after a month in lockup. Despite being angry with me Marisol did visit me almost daily. A month after I got out, I found out I was going to be a father and I didn't want my kid to have a dad that was dead or in jail. We eloped. I went to a trade school to become a mechanic and I busted my for my future family. When Luna was born, it was almost the worst day of my life. Marisol wouldn't stop bleeding. She went into shock and they had to give her a double hysterectomy. She was in the hospital for months and Luna became my world. I wanted her life to be the best, I wanted to give her the world. When Marisol was released, I promised her that our daughter will have a life far better than ours and for years I kept that promise. I saved enough money to move us to the suburbs, became homeowners. I was Girl Scout leader if you could believe that. I made sure Luna went to private school, made sure she knew how to defend herself and always made sure I was the perfect husband. I didn't know my parents. Didn't have a positive male role model in my life, so I didn't know what a healthy relationship looked like. That's a lie. TV dads were my male role models and I mimicked them and the marriage they had on TV. As the years went by, I owned my own garage. My cousin became a pastor, my grandmother was still a pain in my my relationship with my wife was stronger than ever. I made sure I kept my prison body but Luna, Luna hated me. Since she turned 13 she just started hating me. She didn't want me to hug her. Rolled. Her eyes every time I told her I loved her. Ignored me when I asked her about her day in school. It hurt me and Marisol saw it. She told me that she's a teenager and that I should just let it ride. She will come back to me. For two years it was like that. So for her quincenera, I wanted to go all out. Got everything she wanted and she was still disrespectful and briefly the old me almost came out just to put her in her place, but instead, I went to my cousin, vented my frustration and doubts about being a good father, and he told me to just let her be and he said a prayer for me. I wanted a slideshow for the father-daughter dance. I got a chunk of the pictures of us together, but I realized I didn't have any recent pictures of us. She didn't want to take any. The last time I had pictures of her and I smiling with me was on her 13th birthday, and those were on my daughter's broken tablet. I took that tablet, went to a repair shop, and I didn't care the cost. I needed that tablet fixed. After a day and $300, the tech fixed it, and I was happy. 
I knew her passcode, but I never bothered invading her privacy. I just wanted those pictures, and when I opened the tablet and looked in the gallery, there they were. My little girl, smiling and happy to be with me. I felt great. Then the instant messages appeared. It was my daughter talking to my wife. It was a long banter that she didn't want me to dance with her, and it did hurt, but like my wife said, she's being a teenager. Then she said something that destroyed me. She texted why she had to do the father-daughter dance with me since I'm not her father. I felt my heart stopped, I got dizzy, my mouth dried up, and I needed to sit down. My wife responded that I raised her, I loved her, and that makes me her father. But Luna responded by saying that my cousin is her father, and she can't wait for her to turn 18 so she could tell me the truth and she could live with her real dad. That she hated me, that she thanked God that I'm not her father. Marisol began cussing her out saying that it was a mistake for my cousin to tell her the truth two years ago, and the more they talked, the angrier I was getting. My wife lied to me for fifteen years. My cousin knew my confide my issues about Luna and my fears about being a bad father, not only my wife, but had me raise his child. I wanted to hurt them. I felt a mixture of anger, sorrow, grief. I wanted to scream, cry, and die at the same time if that makes any sense. I went to a dark place, and so I wouldn't do anything I told Marisol, that I needed to focus on work so I could pay the quints and instead I drove to Manhattan and saw my old public defender who wasn't a low-level attorney anymore. He had a nice expensive firm near Midtown East. I was surprised that he remembered me, but apparently I was his first case as a public defender. We sat down and I told him everything. Gave him the tablet and when he turned it on, the messages just kept coming. Only this time, Luna was talking to my cousin, her real father, and he was telling her to give me a chance. How I was always there for her, but Luna told him that so was he. How it makes sense that they have so much in common and even called him Pappy multiple times in their conversation and he responded and told her that she was his little girl. We went through our options and he asked me what do I want to do? And I told him that I wanted to go full scorched earth. I wanted to poison the well and he asked me several times if that is what I wanted and nodded. I also told him that everything had to be filed before the quince in two weeks. So we sat down and spent the next twelve hours on what was needed to be done, and I followed his instructions to the letter. I secretly placed my business for sale, called the private school and told him that I will not be paying for next year, closed the college accounts and the savings that I had from Luna and prepared to place my house for sale online. No one was the wiser. I followed his instructions perfectly. There was only one thing I deviated from, the day of the quince. That day went off without a hitch. The whole family was there. Luna was smiling, having fun. Marisol kept asking me if I was okay and I lied to her. It was hard lying to her. From the moment I met her, I never lied to her and during those two weeks, every time I kissed her, held her, made love to her. It was hard not to scream at her. It was hard not to hate her. She knowingly let me raise another man's child. She slept with my cousin a man who saw as my brother, the godfather of my child, the best man when I eloped my confidant. So the rage was hard to suppress to say the least. When it was time for the father, daughter dance, I called her to the center of the stage. She looked annoyed, but walked over. I had the music playing and she smiled, and it tore me apart, seeing her smiling at me. For years I wanted to see that smile again and now I didn't want it. As we dance, I had the slideshow playing. Pictures of the two of us and towards the end of the song, screenshots of her text messages with her mother and real father. Needless to say, this didn't bode too well. Marisol looked like she saw a ghost. Luna just kept staring at the large screen and my cousin just stared at me with fear. Marisol ran to me and told me that she could explain and I told her that I filed for a divorce. That she could explain it in court. She grabbed my arm, begging me and I pulled back. I told Luna that I busted my to give the world and now she doesn't deserve it. I began to walk out, but not before telling my cousin that every time I see him, I'm going to knock him out, then I knocked him out. The aftermath was harsh. Marisol and Luna was at my grandmother's apartment. Her family was shocked and disgusted with her. They wanted nothing to do with her. Her father actually apologized. To me. I don't know why. He never liked me despite turning my life around. That man hated me, but now I was the perfect husband and father. But just a few days prior, I was the former piece of my grandmother, had to audacity to tell me about the story Abraham, and how when came back from battle three years later, his wife had a one-year-old child and he raised him as his own, and how I should be like Abraham, so I told her to get thee out of my house. 
Marisol came a few days later, crying as soon as she saw me, telling me that it was an accident, that when I was arrested she was so angry at me and my cousin was there to console her and one thing led to another, and they had it happened only one time and she was faithful to me ever since. She was willing to take a lie detector test to prove it. So I asked her how long she knew Luna wasn't mine, and she started crying more. That look she gave me just told me that she knew from day one, and asked her to leave. She wanted to go to counseling, telling me that I'm overreacting and we could make it work. It was in the past and I needed to get over it. That I am Luna's father, despite what happened, and I allowed my temper to get the best of me. I must have repeated, get over it, over a dozen times at full volume, while grabbing her and tossing it out the door. I called her a lying I told her that I didn't want to see her face ever again, and I told her that this life that I built no longer belongs to her before shoving her out the door. A couple of weeks went by and she kept blowing up my phone. Not once Luna tried to reach out to me. Marisol was shocked to learn that I sold my business, even more so when she learned that I had an open house. She came in screaming, telling the viewers to get out of her house and pleading with me to seek help. That I was ruining our marriage. That I had no right to sell our home. The home where we raised our child in and I told her that this house is full of lies. It's a house where I raised another man's child and when I sell it, I will give her half and ordered her to get out before I called the cops. It was a bluff. All she had to do was play the victim and I would have been arrested, but she didn't. She complied. Shortly after this, my cousin came to talk to me and I knocked him out, dragged him outside and closed the door. I refused mediation. Marisol wanted to reconcile, but I didn't. I wanted a divorce and my attorney filed for a fast-track divorce and in three months we were in the Nassau County Courthouse. I barely spoke to anyone during that time. I read horror stories about the court system, especially during divorce proceedings, but I didn't have that. I had a female judge who was very fair. My attorney took care of everything. First, Marisol's lawyer tried to talk about my past when I was in a gang, as if my past barred a reason for me to be a terrible husband and father but my attorney quickly smacked that down and the judge reprimanded her attorney for trying to shame someone who turned their life around. My attorney presented all the evidence and offered a lump sum alimony payment with the pending sales of the house and business. At first Marisol kept asking me to reconsider, but I ignored her, and when she finally realized that I'm not budging she agreed. Yet the real surprise happened when it came to child support. My attorney presented all of the text messages from Luna's conversation with Marisol, showing that not only Luna knew I met her father, but she cannot wait to be with her real father, saying that she no longer has to live a lie. Marisol was completely caught by surprise from this. Then my attorney filed a motion to have my name removed from Luna's birth certificate, have my last name removed as well as not being responsible for any child support since all parties agree that my cousin was her father. Marisol was shocked by this. She yelled at me, begged me not to do this to Luna that I am her father because I raised her, and as pathetic as I may sound right now, but if Luna didn't act that way towards me, if she didn't say those things, I would have agreed. There were moments that I wanted to reach out and try to make it work, but then I would look at Luna's continuing text messages to her friends, her real father and mother, and I refocus on my resolve. Till this day, I don't know what hurts the most being lied to by a woman who you thought was the love of your life, or having a child who you try to make their lives better, to give in the world, just toss you aside like trash. The judge was quiet for a long while reading page after page after page of the text messages. In the end, she agreed. I was not financially responsible for Luna, and my name could be removed. My attorney also filed a motion for the courts to go after my cousin to pay for child support, and a motion to sue my cousin in civil court for all the money I have spent raising. Luna, the private schools, dance classes, Girl Scouts, or spec lessons. Everything I have ever spent on that child, and after my attorney explained to the judge that my cousin committed fraud for knowingly allowed to me to raise his daughter, and not offer any financial support or assistance. It was a Hail Mary, and the judge agreed. I didn't bother looking at Marisol when the judge made her decision. I didn't bother listening to her as I walked out the courthouse. I didn't care as I heard her cry for telling me that she only cheated one time and was faithful ever since. I just didn't care anymore. A few weeks later, my ex called me, shocked that I stopped payments on Luna's private schools and all of her activities, and told her to call her baby daddy before hanging up. Even Luna called me first time since this entire ordeal, and she calls me crying that she has to go to public school, 
that they were moving to the old neighborhood and how scary it was and how she wanted us to be a family again. I told her to go to her real father, the man who she truly wanted and ask him. I yelled at her, told her that not only she knew for years, but I read all the text messages, the back and forth and from her own words. She was thankful that a hoodlum like me wasn't her father, even though I haven't been a hoodlum since the day I found out I was going to be a father. I hung up on her after that. I thought about ending it countless times. Thought about ending my cousin, but I made him pay. He had to pay me a half a million dollars. A half a million that was all mine and not one cent belonged to my ex because she agreed on the lump sum. I didn't care that the money came from the church. I was hurting. I left New York shortly after, went to Idaho, as furthest away from New York as possible. I just picked a random state and city and just left. Opened up a new shop, bought a house, but for two years I had trust issues. For two years I saw a therapist, anger management. I went to rage rooms, it was difficult. Until I found myself going back to church and ironically, that was where I met my fiancé. Jocelyn is wonderful, she just turned 30 at the time and we just hit it off. I told her everything that happened to me. I explained to her that I'm going to have trust issues, and she understood. A year later, she told me that I was going to be a dad and insisted that for me to have a DNA test, just so I can have peace of mind. I forgot what it felt like to be happy again, and when my son was born, I was overjoyed. I called my grandmother for the first time in years. She cried, and when I told her about my son, she insisted that I come to New York so she could meet her great-grandchild. Guilt-tripping me by saying that she's 90, and would like to see me one more time and I agreed. We flew to New York, rented a car and drove to Bushwick. The one thing I dislike about the hood. You only need to see one person from your past and the whole neighborhood knows. That you're back. My grandmother saw my son, met my fiancé, made an offshoot comment in Spanish about her being white, and I just yes her to death. I was planning to spend the week, do the tourist thing for once. It was Jocelyn first time in her life in the Big Apple, and I wanted to make it special. It nothing works out as planned. First my ex shouted my name from downstairs. I looked out the window and was surprised how fat she got. My grandmother told me in Spanish to talk to her and Jocelyn agreed. I went downstairs, was awkwardly silent for a minute and that anger just came back like a flood. Marisol told me that I looked good and said that she looked like she told me that she missed me, that she never been with another man since the divorce and I ignored her. She even had the audacity to tell me that I'm a grandfather and I gave her a look. Apparently Luna got with a decent guy and got knocked up at 18. Her baby daddy joined the Marines to support them and her father. Wanted nothing to do with her, just pays the child support and refuses to acknowledge her. He's no longer a pastor and is working at the Banco Popular two blocks over. Then told me that Luna named the baby after me and I couldn't stand looking at her. Marisol wanted me wait because Luna was on her way over and I just walked away. I went to my grandmother's house and I didn't have to tell Jocelyn anything. She just knew and we left. In the elevator, I told her what happened and she smiled and told me everything was going to be all right. The look on Marisol's face when we left the building. She was looking at my fiancé like she was the other woman and Jocelyn, without missing a beat, introduced my son to her. Well, she said, I would like you to meet his biological child. That was a nice twist, but she knew my pain. Marisol kept trying to stop me from leaving, telling me that Luna felt bad about what she did and Jocelyn wanted me to make amends, but I was so angry. I hopped into the car. Ignoring Marisol's pleads and Jocelyn told me to extend an olive branch, so I gave her my number, so Luna could call me and left. At the red light I saw my cousin by the Cachafrito stand and I don't know what came over me. I got out the car, ran up to him, and beat the out of him. Jocelyn was screaming telling me to stop and when we locked eyes, I could see the fear. I spit on him and left. I'm back home. Working being a dad and a good fiancé to a beautiful woman. Yet since going back, when I'm alone with my thoughts he anger comes back. Luna did text me with a picture of her smiling with her son and telling me that she was sorry for what she did. Yet I don't know if she's sorry that she missed me or if she's sorry because the man she wanted to be her father wasn't the man she thought he was. I'm so confused and I'm scared to reach out to her. I want to get past this. I want to move on. My family was my everything. My daughter was my world. Even after these years, it still hurts. It still makes me angry, but I know I need to move on, but it's hard. I want to reach out to Luna, but I'm so scared. I have people telling me to let her back in, but all I could think about are those text messages and the lies. The constant lies.
I need help and my usual methods are not working. Thank you for reading this.